All right, then we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Fred? Okay, let's go down to Juanita. Here. Chris? Here. Peter? Here. Fred? Yes, here. <laughs> okay. Now that you're unmuted. <laughs> okay. So that brings us to the petition number 6034, DEP file 294-601. This is the Park Department application. So I'll just, I'll open it up to, I don't know, Anya or Adrian or Laura, whoever wants to start. Sure, thank you. Um, I can start. My name is Anya Duffy. I work with GZA and um, we're a consultant for the city of Springfield working on the Camp Star Angelina Accessible Trail Project. And I have with me Adrienne Dunk. She's our uh, GZA's wetland scientist and Laura Walsh with the city of Springfield's Parks Department. She's the project manager on this development project. Um, camp Star Angelina is an accessible day camp in um, Forest Park. And this is the second phase of a multi-phase project um, that has its goal to provide outdoor um, recreation and learning experiences for people of all, ability, of all abilities. Um, the phase one of this project included a bathhouse and a pool. And we, we did perform some permitting as part of that work because it had some um, pavement in, within the buffer and um, we came before you at that time. Today's project um, involves a um, woodland trail that starts at just about where that bathhouse is and there's a turnaround there and I can show some pictures in a second. Um, we're just gonna start a new trailhead there and um, um, bring, our goal is to bring camp users and the general public down through the woodland, um, descending about 70, 70 feet to the shores of Porter Lake. Um, you wouldn't even know once when you're up there that you're that close to the lake, it's all wooded. But um, there, are, there are some existing game trails there. Um, there as you know, there are, there's a lot of wildlife in Forest Park and there are some old trails there, but we want to define those trails, make them safer and accessible. Um, I look to the um, United States Forest Service accessibility guidelines for trails when designing this. And um, because of the, the steep topography there, we had to um, serpentine the trail through, through the site at grades that vary from about 5% to as steep as 8%. And I can get into that more. Um, and because of the site constraints, the steepness of slope, and the fact that we don't wanna to have too long of a trail for some of the campers who do have mobility issues um, we are crossing a um, Finger Lake wetland projection. Um, and I'll get into the impacts there. So our impacts are within the buffer zone to a border, bordering vegetated wetland and fill under 500 square feet within a bordering vegetated wetland. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and go right to can you all see, oh, not yet. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay, so yeah. these are our 90% um, construction drawings that were included as part of the NOI. Um, we had survey done out there in 2013 when we first applied for some funding to pay for this project. And at that point, we, we had this whole area, all three of these, they're ravines basically surveyed and every single tree accounted for. Um, we're not going to have to um, disturb this whole area we found. Um, instead, we're going to bring our trail down this way, starting up here is an O, oh, and the phase one included a accessible amphitheater as well next to the pool. Um, our, trail our trailhead is up here. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yep. And so we, we come from here, we go all the way straight down. This is a very um, gradual trail to overlook. Um, and then we follow down this way. An existing trail is actually starts from here and goes straight down here, but that would be too steep for, for most of the camp users. 
So when we get to this point, we switch back, we come around this bowl and come down this next ridge. This is higher in elevation. Down here is the wetland. So it's this really neat kind of ravine um, all covered in the forest floor there is covered in ferns. The um, tree canopy is mostly pine and, and some older oaks up here. Uh, and then we do another switch back with a retaining wall to limit some of that disturbance and avoid taking down too many of these trees. And then this is our wetland crossing here. Um, we propose to fill that and put a uh, culvert in. Um, these plans show a pipe, but we got comment from DEP saying that per Army Corps guidelines, we should have an openness, openness ratio of that pipe of two feet high and three feet wide, and we um, accept that. So when we revise these drawings, we will design that, and it does allow for that. So we will be putting in a, a two by three culvert with six inches of it embedded in the substrate at this point. The trail surface continues on top of that uninterrupted. Um, there's a railing there and two benches. We should probably zoom in. It's really hard to see, I bet. Oops. These are real busy plans. But this is all level. Um, there's two benches here. Uh, this dark line, just that's just our, silt, our silt fence. Um, these triangles, those are the wetland flags. And the wetland at this point is only 12 feet wide. This, this dotted line that goes from the top of my stream to the bottom, that's the pipe. Um, once we pass that crossing, you know, we have a rest. We come up um, gradually. Actually, I think we're going, we're still going down. We go down, um, there's a little wall here to protect, to limit impact, um, have another rest, and then we switch back a series of turns to get down to the shores of Quarter Lake where we're gonna have a little picnic area. Um, we realized that in some parts of this trail, it, 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 it does become steeper, um, but we really wanted to limit the length of it. Uh, we're still within the 8%, so they're more accessible, but we will be um, adding even more benches than shown on this plan. Um, right now we have a bench here, two on the crossing, and one at the top. Um, as we further develop these plans, Laura Walsh and I decided we'll probably put another bench up here in this area and another bench somewhere within these switchbacks to give people um, more opportunity to rest. Um, the total length of trail is just about 2,000 linear feet. Uh, the trail is six feet wide. It'll be um, stone dust or a, a, like a crusher, a, like a crusher fine stone that sets up really hard on a dense graded base with a two foot shoulder. Um, all disturbed areas will be seeded with a shaded seed mix from New England wetland plants and covered with either straw or erosion control blanket. Um, we're proposing um, container plantings of ferns. We may even be able to save some of the ferns there and store them and then replant them. Um, and then some shrubs in some of these areas where we don't really want a lot of, um, you know, people making shortcuts. I have mountain laurel and rhododendron um, proposed and sassafras. Um, let's see, I can show some photos of what it looks like out there. This is that trailhead. Is my street screen still being shown? Yeah. Uh, yes. This is the, tra the trailhead here. This is that uh, gradual area right on top of the ridge. Um, this is when we get into the ravine. And this, er this photo shows where this tree has fallen is basically where that um, wetland crossing is proposed. And you know that's level there. So that's, that's basically the height of uh, what the, the walkway would be there. So just imagine a, a pipe there and we would um, put a, a field stone retaining wall on the downward side of that. And on the upward side, we would just fill it in, but stay within the 250 square foot impact that we've agreed to. 
in the NOI. Um, here are just some more photos. Um, we're planning to, based on the drawings, the survey, the grading, it looks like we may need to take out around 38 trees um, as we get in there with the contractor and we're laying this out, we may be able to avoid more of them. Um, and there's a lot of downwood there and hazard trees too that are just, you know, like widow makers and, and just, you know, within, within our project area, we'll probably be doing some, some removal of that. Um, and I think that's it, or, um, unless we go to, we have a table with impacts that kind of summarizes, again, um, the trail within the buffer zone, zero to 50 foot and 51 to 100 foot, um, roughly 7,100 square, 7, square feet of um, impacts in the, in the 50 foot and 4,700 square feet of impact within the 50 to 100. Um, we, we, we are proposing a wood rail fence where um, the side slopes are a bit steep and also to help guide people along the trail. Um, there'll be many different users and with different um, um, ranges of mobility. So having that extra handrail is, is helpful. Um, the retaining wall will be a field stone retaining wall per um, MassDOT standard. And that is just to retain those slopes and limit impacts and then tree removal. Here I say 28 trees, but I think it might be a little more um, 30 plus. Um, and then, you know, our, our concerns are public safety, access and maintenance as far as that wetland crossing and um, a reason for filling part, that small portion of wetland and putting in a culvert rather than different alternative are those reasons um, it's, it's more accessible. Um, it is uh, less maintenance intensive. We're pretty far down in a hole there. And if, you know, if we were to do a bridge there you know, timber bridge or anything, a tree falls on it, you know, it's, it's going to require more maintenance in the long run and um, just public safety. It's a stable surface and, and wouldn't actually require handrails, although we will be putting them in. Um, and that's it, I think. So if, do you have any questions? I'll open, open it up to questions. Unless, um, unless Laura, would you like to add something? Uh, no, I think you did a great job on explaining the project. One thing we will be adding in um, for the general trail user, but also to help enhance the uh, camp nature programming is some nature interpretive signs, um, kind of explaining um, just the different things that we would find in, in that area of the park, maybe what the wetland is and what its function is in the area. Those are still being developed, but we anticipate those along the trail, uh, most likely where the benches are, just to provide um, a little bit more interest as you're, as you're walking along, but also to help people understand um, the area that they're in. So. Anya, would you uh, just briefly, you kind of have already, but could you just uh, address the two comments from DEP when they issued the file number? Sure. Um, I'll pull up the letter in a second because it, so their concerns were um, the wetland because of its like finger like projection, you know, if you were to just look at it in a plan view, um, it would, you would almost assume there was a flow there. And we found that when we delineated the site and did um, soil augers that there is no sign of flow um, when we, we saw that. Um, actually, Kevin, when you were out there with us, it was almost like hard to even determine whether it even looked like a wetland because it doesn't have the vegetation. Um, but based on the soil, like hand, the augers, there are hydric soils there yep. within those projections. Um, <clears throat> so we feel comfortable that it doesn't, um, 
that it isn't a stream and there is no bank there. And then the other one, I just want to pull it up. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, I think this one was going to be my main uh, a concern for the for this discussion, but you actually kind of slightly addressed it already is that they didn't want to by doing this fill, which you can uh, you you kind of justified in the filing that under the Wetlands Protection Act, you are under that threshold because it's a the finger like projection, but that mm -hmm. they didn't want to create they essentially like an isolated wetland above um, the, the crossing and then the BBW below. And I was slightly concerned about the size of that pipe and was asked, was going to ask for a justification, but it sounds like you've already greatly increased the, the, the volume of that pipe. Yeah, we, um, we reviewed that again and under further review, um, Dan Nietzsche, our wetland scientist and Adrian, they both determined that per the Army Corps general permit, it, it does make sense to have the um, larger opening. So we're gonna be revising a plan. Um, we're at the 90% level, so I'm, I'm gonna be finishing the plans, but I, I, it's my hope that um, before the next meeting, I will have uh, revised plans to the Conservation Commission showing that change. That's something we're definitely gonna <coughs> Be doing. Um, the other comment. Um, yeah, it was a finger like projection. Okay, sorry, I just had to refresh my memory. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Yeah, could you uh, uh, bring back the, um, the diagram, the first one that you put out? showing the trail. Sure. Like beauties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it's like I made sure like most of my work was I always have way too many windows open. <laughs> Sorry. I think I just okay. I might have closed the uh I think I did close the NLI. So I'm just gonna pull that up again. Here we go. Uh the diagram. Yeah, um, you know which one that was that? The, 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 the map first, with the, the, the map that okay. the first one just okay showing the the um the, the trail the sure right so when you when you start at the the, the trailhead mm -hmm. which um well, so if you go to the very end of the trailhead like where you turn mm -hmm. where you turn is that where if you go straight down is that where the where is that's that's already exists. Yeah, this goes, turn this goes steeply down. So this trail is already existing. Right. So you may have walked it before. Yeah. And there's actually a huge oak tree that just a came down. A huge one that just <laughs> came down, I know. Yes, yeah, right huge. there. When we, right first there. Started, <laughs> when we first started this plan all these years ago, I, that tree was so impressive. I, I just envisioned like story time there with the campers and yeah, yeah. Know, people Did having a great- great moment and now it's falling down it's oh. not only did it fall down but where it hit the ground it sunk in it must yeah. have come down with incredible force yeah yeah so mother nature took care of that one yeah <laughs> to find a so new that, story spot. yeah so that's where it turns right there and yeah so that we'll have falling. a we'll have a view there uh towards the north of the marshes but yeah we'll be going instead of going straight off of this Left. Right, so and down. then it goes down. Okay, and then when it turns, when it makes the U, that's mm -hmm. still on the top, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, this mind. is a ridge I, I, because on I both it sides, now. it actually it doesn't fall off as steeply on this side. Um, some of these ridges, it's like you know, you're 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 on a yeah. definite ridge and it falls mm -hmm. off on both sides. But I think here to the west, it's it's a little high still. You have some you have some room before you run out. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's a, a very it. defined trail already right here. Yeah. But it does just it look at you see the contour lines here. Mm -hmm. We're at seven percent, and then it just really steepens up here. Uh huh. Those are the so famous we're... dingles that they call around here. Mm -hmm. That 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 western <laughs> yeah, it's a dingle. Word. Yeah, <laughs> a dingle. 
That's because there's so many people from this area, from the from rest Ireland. coast of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is a dingle. Yeah. But it's, it's a really nice intact one and Yes, know, it is. It is. I think it'll really enhance enhance that area. That's very exciting. There used to be so there's some platforms here. There used to have camping here. These are like yeah. wooden platforms. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There back. was camp Camp Seco. They used to do mm -hmm. an overnight. They used to, yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Good. the when you said that you're going to do some cleanup of widow makers and that, you didn't meet anything that's on the ground. Only hangers, right? Hangers and anything directly in the path. So where we're putting okay. our path, if there's a, a log down, uh, if we can just cut it, you know, fine. But if, it, if it's within our work area, we would haul it out. And the, okay. the, um, the city's or the parks department is, um, I'm thinking of a way to write this in the specifications when it goes to bid, but they're interested in taking all the lumber from this from the trees that are removed in um, saw, they have a sawmill in the park and cutting lumber out of it. So yep. I'm uh, hoping to maybe sawmill. make some benches out of it. For the, that sawmill came home. from the water department. They used to own it and they gave it to the park so oh. that they could do just that. They could cut well, lumber for benches. Tall, straight pines and some older oaks in there. But, and I really, you know, I hate to cut down a tree. So I really try to avoid as much as I can. Um, having well, you'll to get a lot trees. of lumber from that big oak that came down. Yeah, <laughs> all naughty. <laughs> well, we still have a whole Coffee year table. round lodge we'd like to build, which maybe we could have some wooden floors. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be great, Laura. Yeah, Laura, that's the next phase. There? Yeah, next yeah, phase. <laughs> the, the final phase for the, the whole uh, master plan site would be a, a year round uh, building for therapeutic recreation. That would, you know, um, Juanita, I know you're familiar with the area. You know, they used to have the little camp building that, that came down. Um, so this would replace that, but it would also be a space where you could have, I mean, you could have your conservation commission meetings there if you would like to do it in a rustic setting. And it's ideally would be an alternative to um, the Victorian carriage house. You, this, the Camp Star Angelina building will be available for events and workshops when it's not being used for programming. Technically you could get married there, different things like that. So. That would be the wait, final wait, stage. Where is that? That will go um, where the old pool was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that, that space. So that is one, that will be the final piece to this puzzle and really turning this into a um, outdoor therapeutic recreation center, being able to do some some cool, great programming there on a year round. Mm -hmm. Good. good use, good use of the property. Yes, very yeah, good. wonderful use. So years and years and years ago, my mom <laughs> likes to remind me we had a family reunion out here at Camp Seco. <laughs> Maybe I started my ideas of planning back then. <laughs> but this this trail would be open to the public as well. Oh yes, yeah. correct. Yep, it's it's open to the public. It's it's open to anyone during the the day camp runs for um, in non COVID times. It runs for six uh, six weeks out of the summer from you know typically. Uh, like eight to three. Um, and during that time, you know, the public is able to use the trail. Um, and they're, yeah, so it's open to everyone. It's gonna be great. That, that was a common venue for family reunions, Laura, back then. I, I'm hoping we can get it back there, Chris. Yeah. I wanna just, you know, get that pavilion. That pavilion is for um, as old as it is, it's in pretty great shape. So. It, it needs a little bit of work, um, but that site really has a lot of potential to, to be an, even more of an asset for the city. And um, those are great trails down there. And I, you know, if you're not familiar with the area and you, and you walk down there and all of a sudden you see this beautiful lake in the middle of the park, you're like, where am I? And I think for a lot of our campers who come from you know, some of the, the more urban areas of Springfield, when they get out there, it's it's pretty amazing to, to see their transformation and to enjoy that that area. So looking forward to it with your blessing to open this area up for people of all abilities to use that trail would be would be great. My dad, um, we spent a lot of time growing up on these trails with him and this would be a trail that he would actually be able to use. He's not able to walk through the trails anymore. Uh, so that's one of my other sidebars since you guys know me. Um, that's one of our other motivations is just be able to provide some recreation for people that 
um, that want to get out there but haven't been able to do to their own physicality. So. He certainly would appreciate being able to back go back into that area, I'm sure. Yes, I, I'm looking very forward to it very much when I can bring him down there. So it's going to be great. Unless uh, any other commissioners have questions about the the plan sets, um, I guess I just request that we uh, you stop sharing your s screen on you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, are there any other questions from commissioners? Hearing none, um, actually we, we have to continue this to the next meeting uh, to wait for public input. Give you, you wanna give your typical disclaimer, Kevin? Sure, uh, so this is obviously being recorded. It'll be um, available to the public on uh, Focus Springfield's website and or their YouTube page. And so anyone watching this in the future, if they would like to comment um, or air any questions or concerns, you can direct them to me at my email. It's kchafee, K-C-H-A-F-F-E-E -E, at springfieldcityhall.com or you can leave a comment on my voicemail, 413-787-6234. Thank you, Kevin. And if there's no other um, questions, then a motion to continue to the next meeting is in order. I'll make a motion to continue to the next meeting. I'll second. Thank you. Did you get that, Stephanie? The, I did. Fred and Peter, thank you. Roll, Fred? Yes. Juanita? Yes. Chris? Yes. Peter. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. all. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care, everyone. Bye. Right. Bye. Okay. Item three is continued items. Uh, 81 Fairhaven. Kevin? Yeah. The, there's been some discussion, but n nothing really has uh, has progressed yet with this. So we're, okay. we're still waiting. Then a certificate for compliance, a certificate of apply, compliance for 294-0388. So I was contacted, you know, we, we've had the recent presentations from the folks over at the Eastfield Mall. Uh, the commission approved the wetland boundary. So it, it sounds like they've got some ideas that they want to maybe pursue development. And so as part of their due diligence, they found an old order of conditions. Uh, it's from like the late 90s, early 2000s. I was, I wanted to ask you about it because my initial thought was like, oh, it's, you know, it's 20 plus years old. We should probably just close it out. But I did a little, uh, this week I did a little digging into the file and um, there, it, it seemed like there was like progress and then there was some last little bits that were, there was like a, maybe a stormwater detention pond being built. I was hoping you had some kind of institutional memory of it. And it seemed like there might've been a little frustration at the time about plantings and, and that sort of thing. And then there seems to be like a gap in the paperwork. And then a couple of years later, it was evidence that they had, um, recorded the deed restriction that the commission had conditioned the project for. So that that got recorded and evidence of that is in the file, but it never seemed to have gotten closed out. But having visited the site, you know, again, 20 years later, it looks like that whole stormwater detention area and everything is functioning as it should and it's vegetated. So I, I, I didn't know if we wanted a little more information from them, you know, they requested it, but I didn't necessarily get like a full on as built and statement um, from an engineer. So I just wanted to open it for discussion and see who, if Chris, if you remember it or uh, anyone else who might have some information. I kind of, I do recall them, there was some back and forth about the plantings, um, but as would, take place, nature took care of that, <laughs> kind of uh, <laughs> vegetated its own. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and and the issue, part of the issue was they never recorded it um, okay. during those discussions. And 
So now you're saying the record does show that it was uh, recorded. There's a restriction that basically says no future work may occur within the 50 foot unless they come to the commission. It was kind of a, you know, a, a, a fail safe or whatever you want to call it that it's like, all right, nothing more unless you ha have full plans to the commission and their attorney recorded it and provided proof of recording of that restriction. So that is in the file. So to me, having visited the site, I'm not uh, opposed to to issuing it, but I didn't know if we wanted just a little bit more from them uh, before we did. I, I think to cover yourself, Kevin, and, and the commission, you probably should get a letter saying that all of the conditions, you know, that the order of conditions was satisfied rather okay. than just a verbal request. Yeah, and I, my guess is that from the work they've done recently, they probably have all of this kind of on a current survey, so they could submit that as right. their as-built. So I'll, I'll just say that we just wanted that to be formalized, uh, at the, the plan, the letter, and then I think at the next uh, meeting, we can just issue the certificate. There, there's no rush in it. It's just sort of a, they're tying up loose ends and all that stuff in case there might be a transfer of ownership. Hey Fred, you're back in the car. <laughs> It wouldn't be a meeting without You're muted. Fred You're cast. muted, Fred. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. I have a client that gets off of work at this time. So this oh. is the only time we can look at homes. So usually I can push them back. I wasn't able to push them back today. But right, well, it's not till 6 o'clock, so I got time. All right, we won't keep you too long then. So, yeah, Kevin, we'll put that on the next I, I'm one. I'm very sorry. No, no, no problem. It's just interesting to watch you changing your location. <laughs> that's all. Um, so the meeting minutes, is there a motion on the minutes for the January 12th meeting? I make a motion. We accept the meetings of the, the minutes of January 12th. I'll second. You? Stephanie? One second. Okay, we have Fred. Yes. Juanita. Yes. Chris. Yes. Peter. Yes. Now, um, did anybody else see the Sunday paper? Stanton Errors passed away. Really? Yeah, and it, and it do, does say unexpected. <gasps> um, he's young, I mean... Yeah, he's 68, I think, maybe. Oh, my gosh. 69. Oh. Um, oh so that's sad. There isn't, I think there's a walkthrough wake, but I, they had something in there about donating to, and I swear it was a golf, like scholarship or some program that teaches kids to golf. Mm -hmm. um, if you could get that information, that would be great. Well, I'm thinking maybe the commission. I mean, he worked for the commission yeah. for a long time. That we should send a, a donation. Yeah, that's a good that idea. From yeah. our Stan's last name? Tenerowitz. T E N E R O W I C Z. Wow. Do you think it was COVID? I'm wondering. They didn't say that, but I'm wondering whether it might have been. Um, Elaine passed away a couple of years ago from a heart attack. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, well, yeah. I was just going to say I was going to send, send her a card, but I guess not. No, no. Uh, um, wow. So, and it's, I, it was a shock. I couldn't believe Sunday. Yeah. I, I, I said, oh my God, Stan. Um, yeah. But he did work for us for a long, long time. I think it'd be a long nice time. gesture if the commission sent something to that charity that was mentioned in the, uh, yeah. That's Kevin, a would good you idea. look at, at the, um, a bit and yeah okay wow i mean we can't take a formal vote but i think you've got sense that it's the consensus of the committee Kevin. yeah and it's kind of what we do in the past have done in the past yeah yeah no that's that sounds really that sounds like the right thing to do so are there if there's nothing else we can Adjourn and let Fred get on to showing a house and hopefully he gets a sale out of it. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs>
Someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, roll, Fred. And unmute Fred? yourself. <laughs> Fred, you're muted. Sorry, yes. Okay. Juanita? Yes. Chris? Yes. Peter? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Um,